So as I just uh, mentioned, whenever there is an object that you look at it and you know that the object is not moving. Not moving means it's not translationally moving or rotationally moving, right? So just like pretty much any object on this table is in equilibrium. It's not spinning and it's not moving, right? So for that object, you might call it static equilibrium because it's not moving at all, right? The sum of the torques should be equal to zero. My way to write that, of course, is that the net torque, same thing, is equal to zero. But you know something else. You know that the sum of the forces is also zero. If the object is not moving, the sum of the forces needs to be equal to zero. That is Newton's second law, isn't it? Because the sum of the forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration. If the object is not moving, definitely does not have any acceleration. Therefore, the sum of the forces is zero. Another way to write that is force, net force equal to zero. I just wrote the same thing. So now you have, we, we did problems with static equilibrium before that we could solve with just using Newton's second law, saying that the sum of the forces was equal to zero if the object was not moving. And that has two equations associated with it, right? The sum of the forces in the x direction is zero. The sum of the forces in the y direction should be zero. And we use that to solve problems. Now when you have an extended object, when it, the object is not just a point particle as we've done before, then that is still true, but you have an additional equation, which is that the sum of the torques is equal to zero. You just mentioned a case, which uh, I don't think we're going to do many problems with that, which is you might have a situation where the object, where the sum of the torques is equal to zero, but the object might still spin it, be spinning. It would spin in a particular way, which is the angular velocity will be constant, right? We'll talk about that when we uh, write the equation that relates torque with angular acceleration, all right? For now, let's just stick to the case where it's static equilibrium, nothing is moving. So what I have here is, I don't know if you all can see it, but I have a board here, and I have a scale on one side. Ideally, I would have two scales, but I only have one. So just one scale, and on the other side, I have some support, right? So I'm going to stand at different points, and we're going to measure what is the reading of the scale. We're going to see what's the reading of the scale as I stand first on top of the scale, then a distance a quarter of the length of the board, then right in the middle of the board, then three quarters of the length, and then on the other side of the board. All right? I'm going to start on this side. Hope it doesn't. Okay, does that look good enough? Okay, I'm going to move to the next spot. In the middle. The board is not very strong. And finally, oops. All right, good enough. I'm going to measure the distance from here. X, and I'm standing here. So the system that I'm interested in in this problem is the system made of me and the board, right? It's important always to define what system are you talking about, right? OK. The board has some weight. So the reading of the scale is going to depend on how heavy is the board, except that before I did this uh, demo, I zeroed the scale to show no weight for the board. OK, so that's been taken out of the equation. So assume that the board has no weight, because I already zeroed the scale. So the only thing that is going to affect the reading of the scale, it's going to be my weight, of course, and where, as you can see, where am I standing along that board? Correct? So let's see if we can understand why the plot behaved that way. 
when I was standing over here, the weight of the scale shows 600 and something, right? That means I lost weight from last time I did a demo like this. <laughs> and apart from that, it shows the maximum value, right, that we have, which was when I was standing here. Then at the quarter mark, halfway and three quarters, the weight kept descending, kept being less and less. Not the weight, not my weight, of course, that's just mg, but the force, what, we're, what that plot is showing is the force of the scale. Let's call that F1. This other support is going to have to be applying a force F2 on the board, right? If the system is me and the board, the forces acting on the system are my weight, and the two things that are touching the board are one support and the scale, right? The direction of the forces is not hard to figure it out, right? It's got to be up to hold the board with my weight on top so that we don't fall. So that's the direction of the forces. And because we, you, I didn't fall, or you didn't see the plank going this way or that way, right? we can say that there was static equilibrium. This is a problem about static equilibrium. That implies that the sum of the torques acting on the system, bore plus person, is equal to zero. And it also implies that the sum of the forces is equal to zero. If this was not zero, I would be going up in the air or going into the ground. Or if this was not zero, I would be spinning one way or the other. The bore would be moving one way or the other, rotating. Right? So those two conditions need to be satisfied at all times. Let's see what this one says. Start with the easy one, right? The sum of the forces equals to zero. So that means that F1 positive plus F2 positive minus Mg should be equal to zero. All right, there's nothing else that our equation is saying. In principle, it would say something about the x components, but we don't have anything with x components here, so that, that's, that's it. The other equation, the sum of the torques equal to zero. Where are we going to use the axis of rotation? That's all, always the first thing that you have to figure or decide or figure out, right? If the object has an obvious point, if it's rotating about a particular point, if there is some rotation caused by the torques, then you know what the axis of rotation is, right? Like in the case of the bicycle, I was pulling and the bicycle was stopped by the step. So you know that that point is, about, is the point about which the wheel is going gonna, is gonna to pivot. But here, this could be the axis of rotation. This could be the axis of rotation. This could be the axis of rotation. There is freedom in where to choose the axis of rotation because there is no actual rotation in the problem. Right? You can say about this point, the sum of the torque should be equal to 0 if the board is not uh, to rotate about that point, if the board is not going to go this way. But you could say that about this point, the sum of the torque should be equal to zero because the board didn't spin this way, right? Or you could say the sum of the torques about the middle point is zero because the board didn't go this way, right? All of those possible rotations, all of those rotations would be possible, but there is no rotation, so it doesn't matter which point you choose, okay? So what is the rule? You want to ha have some rule to determine which point is are all points equal? That might be the question in your mind. Can I choose just any point? The answer is, in principle, yes, but it would be easier. It would make your uh, solution of the problem easier if you chose the axis of rotation at the place where you're not interested in finding what the force is. If you were not asked to find what is F2, we're just looking at the reading of F1, right? We're trying to understand how does F1 behave. Then I might just choose this as the axis of rotation. And in my equation for torque, F2 is not going to be there. Right? So that would be a smart thing to do. So choosing this as the point of axis of rotation, then we have to add two torques. The torque of my weight, that's going to have some sign, and the torque due to the force 1. And when I'm done writing those torques with the proper sign, they should cancel out each other. 
correct? So what's the torque of gravity, my weight? Well, it depends how far, that's where the distance at which I was standing comes in in the problem. It depends how far I was standing from this point. If I call that x, right, then it's going to be the force times the moment arm. The force is perpendicular to the board. The board, we assume that it was horizontal, right? So that d is simply x. And now I have to worry about the sign. Is it positive or negative torque? About this point, if that was the only force acting on the board, the board, the board would go this way. And that is moving as the hands of a clock. So that is negative. The other torque that I need to use is the torque of the force F1. It's the magnitude of the force. I don't yet know how much that is. I just leave it as a variable. And the uh, moment arm of that force, perpendicular distance between the line, or if you want, the magnitude of the force times the distance times the sine of the angle between the force and the uh, position vector. So both cases, of course, that is just L, the length of the board. Positive or negative? If F1 was the only force acting on the board, the board, my arm, will go this way. F1 would be pushing it to go this way, right? So that is plus. Okay, so now we're ready with this equation. We put in all the terms we have for the torque of the of gravity, mgx, the torque of F1, F1L equals zero because the board was not rotating. And there you have it. F1 is equal to mgx divided by l. Let me write it this way. Just a second. mgx over l. So that uh, now compared with the measurements that we made. When x was l, that means I was sitting on top and was standing on top of the scale. This calculation shows that the force of the scale should be my weight. Okay, that's why I said that that showed my weight. That is that measurement up there. 600 and something uh, newtons. Looks like 610 or something like that. The next value was when I was standing at this point. So the distance here is 3 quarters of L. So 3 quarters of L divided by L is 3 quarters. So the measurement of the scale should be 3 quarters of the highest measurement over there, 600 and something, 3 quarters of that. That should be the next measurement. Then the next one, when I'm standing in the middle, that will be 1 half of my weight. So if my weight is 620 or something like that, this measurement should be half of that, 300 and something, and so on. All right? <coughs> 